Welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, you've obviously not yet heard enough about Leveson. Um, <laughs> there is an awful lot still to go, but actually I do think this is a really good evening to be looking at this because we've, we've had the report, uh, some of us were locked in uh, that day and we're trying to assimilate it in an hour and a quarter before we went live at uh, 1.30, which was a fairly interesting exercise. Then we've had all the political response, response from lots of the participants uh, uh, and so on. We've had the weekend to digest it. The debate is still going on. I don't know how many of you uh, were watching the debate before uh, BBC News Channel moved over to more interesting things and the Duchess of Cambridge's uh, pregnancy, but uh, uh, thank you for coming anyway. Uh, An awful lot of reactions have been extremely precipitous and extremely misleading. Um, so just very, very briefly, this is uh, just three things, three really rather important things, that Leveson does not recommend, um, even though you might get the impression that he did in his report. He does not recommend a compulsory system of independent regulation. He recommends a voluntary system of independent regulation, a voluntary system. Second, le second, second Leveson does not recommend a statutory backstop to independent regulation. He recommends a process by which an independent regulatory system set up and devised by the publishers themselves can verify and frank that system such that the public have confidence in it and so that its members get some benefits within the law, particularly <coughs> with regards to action taken against them in privacy and defamation. Thirdly, Leveson does not make Ofcom the statutory backstop, since there is no statutory backstop. He suggests that Ofcom could be the body that did that verification. This is one of the ones that I think has unfortunately led to an awful lot of confusion because of the other roles that Ofcom had. And I think there's, there's been some entirely justified debate about whether or not that confusion actually is really rather material. Uh, and therefore, Ofcom probably shouldn't be the body that does the verification. Leveson is not a free speech or a free pe press issue. Um, it has annoyed me for, for a long time now, that even before Leveson was reported, we had this situation where um, it was the terms of reference were being reframed to make this between a free press and a shackled press, when it was never anything to do with that. Now, I'm all for free speech. I'm all for free speech, unlimited free speech. But there's a very big difference between my right to say what I believe and to impart what I want to say um, and, and speech as a as a business, the idea of, of corporate speech, speech which is there to make money. They are different things. There's a difference between me cooking at home and setting up a business where I cook and sell to the public. One, I can do whatever I want. I can cook with whatever ingredients I want. It doesn't matter. When I'm selling to the public, there has to be some sort of regulation. No one would argue with that. There needs to be some sort of rules. Um, I don't think, I think that's fairly <coughs> common sense entirely. And I've think it's very disappointing so, some of people characterizing this as this left right split as we, we've had people say oh index on censorship is standing with the male and Murdoch no we're standing for <coughs> press freedom uh, standing up for free speech you, you don't always agree with the substance of what people say you defend their right to say it so, so for me that's the, the core issue and, and uh, I think the issue around corporate power I mean Leveson says something quite interesting around plurality and there's plenty of ways of looking at um, concentration of power in, in markets. And just like other laws, competition laws can apply across the board. Why are we talking about specific laws for the media? That, that's completely wrong. Fundamentally, the problem with it is, and this is where you know, I really just differ with the whole discussion, is I think the whole discussion of the, the phone hacking, the post kind of phone hacking scandal and Leveson is based on a central myth, which is been accepted on by many people on all sides of the discussion, which is the, 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 the idea, the myth in my mind, that the press has actually been too free to run wild in this country. And it needs to be tamed in some way. It needs to be curtailed in some way. I look at things the other way around. I think that this, the press in this country is by no means free or open enough, even before we have a new regulator of whatever sort appointed to come and wash the naughty newspapers' mouths out with soap. So. Uh, I think that the Hunt Black thing has accepted the premise that, that the, the press needs to be tamed. And because of that, it's very difficult to argue against what Leveson is saying if you start from that position. I mean, that's not an endorsement of phone hacking, presumably. Well, 
I, don't, I certainly don't endorse the hacking of Millie Dowler's phone or the, or the cases that the news of the world have gone to court with. Like all other methods of investigative journalism, I think, you know, I'd rule nothing out, rule nothing in. Everything has to be decided in a specific context. After all, David Lee of The Guardian, you know, one of the great uh, haters of the news of the world, went to the Leveson and said, by the way, I've hacked phones. But as he said, he thought he'd got a public interest well, out, he, and he, he didn't know he didn't. As so. he said, I did it for ethical reasons in the public interest. That's yeah. ethics and public interest as defined by The Guardian, which these things always are. You know, editors and, and uh, journalists make judgment calls about what reporting method is acceptable in any kind of circumstances. And I think, you know, you can imagine any circumstances in which all kinds of underhand methods would be uh, legitimate in order to get a story. No, none of the great stories of the last 200 years have ever been broken if everyone had, had obeyed the rules all the time, that's for certain. That's not to say that the hacking of Millie Dowler's phone is in any way defensible. On the civil side, uh, if you are wanting to take any civil action, in other words, if, you want, if you're monstered by, by the press and you <coughs> want to take any action in, in libel or privacy, um, that's not dealt with at a county court level or elsewhere. You have to go to the high court if you want to take legal action. For most people, that is just unthinkably expensive. I mean, just absurd. Um, and, 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 and also time consuming and exhausting and everything else. Um, I mean, we're not talking you know, thousands, we're talking tens of thousands, if, and if it goes to court, millions of pounds. Now, up until now, there have been uh, uh, people, including the Dowers, the Je Christopher Jeffries, and the McCanns, who have better benefited from what, what are called no win, no fees, which have been abused, but they've also helped some people without means. They are effectively disappearing as of April 1st next year. So, Lord Justice Leveson is saying, what happens? What happens to an individual like this? If you don't have an effective regulatory system, if you don't have some way in which some ordinary person can get some redress, is that, is that fair? Is that what we want in our society? Um, John, th th first, and then uh, you, and then, and then you. Yep. By the way, I don't think the Founding Fathers envisioned a Fox News and didn't think that they would claim First Amendment rights. They'd <laughs> love to be re-regulating broadcasting in the United States. Mick Hume, Mick Hume. It's um, called freedom. It's called freedom. I don't think it's the right to use the airwaves in a partisan way. I, but wait, 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 sorry, sorry. You, 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 you mean free speech is not, it's not the freedom to say what you think. You've got to say I what you think. I think a lot of people in the United States would love to have a broadcast regulated environment that would stop a Fox News from destroying public discourse. They'd like something as boring as the BBC, would they, as the alternative? I, God bless the BBC. God, I work for Al Jazeera. It also has to pay attention to Ofcom regulation. I've seen more attention paid to trying to meet the standards of investigative journalism that actually... Like has, Newsnight. That's such a cheap... You know, let's talk about well, you. Let's talk it's about you and off. ITN if you want to talk about. All right, claims. come on, then let's talk about that. All right, let's. Let me just put something to you. You're cavalier in your dismissal of the rights of minorities and third parties to try to get some remedy if they feel they're being bullied and systemically persecuted by a press, which has been done in this country. Some of us have seen up close individuals whose lives have been destroyed by a Daily Mail or an Express or a Daily Star. Why are you so dismissive of their rights to turn to an independent regulator to try to get redress in the same way people can through Ofcom? I'm a little surprised, too, that you, Kirsty Hughes, are not more concerned about the free expression rights of individuals who also have had no recourse because they cannot compete with the so-called corrections that the only thing that they had um, at their disposal is to get a complaint heard, which we're not talking about complaints, we're talking about systemic biased coverage. And then I'd like to bring in Richard on that to, to, to put you know real examples forward. That's my point to you, Mr. Hume and Chrissy. What is a free press? Here's the thing, very difficult for us all to accept, right? And in the end, you're gonna have to swallow it. What is a free press? The clue is in the question, it's free. It doesn't have to comply with what I think it ought to be. It doesn't have to comply with what John thinks it ought to be or anybody else here thinks it ought to be. Right. A free press, which we don't have in this country. Is there responsibility in there somewhere? Can I? Yeah, can you, I, you would hope so. Yeah, I really yes, want to get you would hope, John, that journalists are responsible and publications are responsible. But, but, it is not for your idea of responsibility to be imposed on somebody, your, your taste and agenda to be imposed on somebody else. Question there or comment there. Um, speaking as a investigative reporter for th three decades, I think there's something quite key that we're missing here. If you take as your initial premise that democracy won't exist if you don't have healthy investigative journalism, which is a view I subscribe to, what do we know about investigative journalism? We know that at the moment it's on its knees 
good public interest investigative journalism because there's not enough resources. Right. So there's an irreconcilable paradox here because on the back of the appalling behaviour within News of the World and other organisations, there's this huge backlash occurring which is heading towards legislation. What will that do? That will crack down on and legalise the whole process of investigative journalism. Now let me tell you, as an investigative journalist, you get there, you go down dirty and mean sometimes, you have to do things that are illegal, you have to make really difficult decisions, and if you have to argue every point with a lawyer, which is the ramification of all this, you won't be able to do it, because no one will fund it. It's just as simple as that. So there's a real problem that the baby's going to get thrown out of the bathwater if we go to a much more statutory base where there's a lot more accountability, if there's data protection. Every journalist who's worth all worthy sort abuses the Data Protection Act because that's how you operate. You know, there's endless things like that. If you're facing more and more regulation, it will just stop. Okay. On that note, it's been a fascinating evening. It's been really passionate, total opposite views on all sides. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank you for coming. Thank you for contributing. But please do thank uh, your panel.